Hey guys, it's Nick with Table 19 Media. Uh, today I wanna show you how I quickly uh, merge all of my HDR photos, my five frames of photos in Lightroom so that I can quickly start editing all of them. It can be a tedious process to go in and select all five and then hit uh, you know, merge HDR, then wait for it to merge uh, and then just go all the way down the line. So here's a faster way to do that. Um, and I hope it saves you a lot of time so that you can get to the good stuff and start editing all your photos. Before we get started, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, make sure that you hit that bell. We have more videos like this coming out that help you take better photos and video so you can grow your brand. All right, let's hop into Lightroom and I will show you how I get all this done. All right, so I've imported all of the photos into Lightroom uh, very easy just by clicking import right here and um, selecting you know, the folder that you have all your images. Now when I'm shooting HDR photos, I'm shooting five exposures uh, with two stops between each exposure. So I'm getting eight stops of dynamic range for the photos so that I can pull out the, uh, you know, the shadows. Um, but also the highlights, you know, especially with real estate photography and I shoot near the beach so that that view outside the window is very important. Um, but in this instance, it's just a normal single family house in a suburb. So, um, you know, necessarily getting, you know, exactly what's outside the window isn't that important as maybe a, um, a, a photo shoot at, you know, at a beach house or at a condo on the beach. Um, but in this example, I just want to show you how I merge the photos get them all batched and ready so that I can quickly uh, merge all of, the, uh, all of the batches together. So now that we have all of our images imported, we're gonna go down the line and just select uh, the first five exposures. So I'll click on the first one, hold shift, and then click on the last one, then hit command G. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna put it into a stack. So now later on when I have all my stacks, all I have to do is highlight them and then hit um, merge to HDR. So I'm going to go down the row. And so what I've done is actually um, I'm adjusted the, 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 uh, the size of the thumbnails so that I have six so that I know that as I'm moving through here, um, um, I have the five exposures. So now I can get one and then command G. Um, to me, it's just easier to visually see where uh, where the next you know batch of five are doing it that way so one and then five so we're gonna go all the way down the line and batch all of these real quickly i want to show you the the process a little bit slower just so uh just so that you're, you're getting what's going on um so we have these five photos and so if I right click on now that I've selected these five photos and go down to stacking and then group in the stack, I can do it that way. It's gonna put it into a stack, the five exposures into one single stack. I'm gonna hit Command Shift G to unstack that. Um, another way to do it would be to highlight them and then go up to photo and then down to stacking. And then you can see group in the stack and then it has the shortcut Command G, unstack, you know, Shift Command G. So uh, there's just a couple other ways to do it. If uh, you don't want to necessarily use the shortcut, we should go through the, the go through that process. So just so you guys, uh, you know, get that get that full uh, the full process. All right, now that we have all of these stacks created, we have 33 stacks. What I'm going to do is select, hit Command A, and select all of the stacks, and then go to Photo, Photo Merge, and then HDR. Now when I hit this, what it's going to do is basically set all of these into the queue up here. You'll see up here, set all those into queue to merge them automatically. So that's now it's going to go through all of them and put them into queue and merge them. So I just need to step away from the computer, let it do its thing. It shouldn't take that long depending on your computer, um, but it's going to merge all of, the, all of the photos together. Each stack, take that stack, merge all the photos that are in that stack, and then give you an HDR image, uh, you know, a, a, a basic HDR image that now you can take and edit yourself. So let's do that. So photo merge and HDR and the, the shortcut for that is control H. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see HDR 33 operations 
33 operations in progress. So we're just gonna let that run and then we can go into our images and start editing them. While these images are processing, uh, we'll give you a couple details about when I shoot uh, photos. Um, I use a Sony a7 III camera and I have a Laowa 12 millimeter zero D lens that I use for most of the real estate photos that I do. I will say most because there are some occasions where the unit that I'm shooting or the area that I'm shooting is just too small and to shoot with a wide angle lens in that space will just make it look too distorted. It will make it look too unrealistic of what it actually looks like. So that's usually where I'll switch to my 24 millimeter and um, shoot, uh, get far back as far back as I can and shoot that. Um, also, if I'm in a property where the, the ceiling is very low, I'll most likely shoot with a 24 millimeter instead of the 12 millimeter, uh, just because I'll end up getting so much ceiling uh, with that lens. So I, I opt for the 24 millimeter. When I'm shooting the five different exposures, I'll make sure that my ISO is all the way down at 100. And then I will uh, set my aperture to about um, eight. And then I will adjust the shutter speed to compensate for making it brighter or darker um, uh, for the exposure. That way, um, I'm introducing the least amount of noise as possible, having a low ISO. Um, I'm also setting the aperture to eight because I want most of the um, image, you know, I want, uh, I, I don't want there to be so, uh, so much uh, depth of field um, in the shot. I want most, I want it all to be uh, in, um, in focus. Um, so I'm just adjusting the shutter speed um, to make sure that, you know, I'm getting a bright enough um, exposure for those images. Now shooting on the a7 III, when you put it into bracketed uh, photo mode, um, it will have on the exposure meter where, you, where it shows you, you know, where it lines up as far as how much light is letting in and you wanna center, you wanna make sure that those, uh, those little ticks are centered on the exposure meter. Now I tend to actually underexpose just a hair, so I'll actually center those five um, ticks for the five different exposures just below um, center. That's because I'd rather underexpose a tad bit that I can bring it up as opposed to maybe you know accidentally overexposing where I lose that information in the highlights if it's if it's blown out. Um, it's usually not that much of a consideration, but I prefer to just shoot under so just one tick um, under um, so that I know that I can definitely bring it up if I need to. Also, quick note of the version of Lightroom that I'm using. I'm actually using Lightroom Classic. Uh, I prefer it. I think the uh, the other version is a little bit too, I guess, uh, you know, consumer. So I'd prefer uh, this version is a little bit more professional to me, just in appearance and and you know, see with the other version. I think is just uh, a little annoying, just as far as all the, the whole syncing thing. So uh, I'm using Lightroom Classic to do all of my photo editing in. Now, um, there are times where I'll actually take a photo into Photoshop. Um, and the biggest reason for that would either to be add lines, property lines, um, or add some sort of star or arrow. If it's a drone photo that I need to show, hey, this is where the house is, or this is where the property is, or these are the property lines um, uh, of, uh, of this property. Um, another reason would be sky replacements. Uh, it's really not, you're really not able to do that in, uh, in Lightroom that I've seen, uh, but Sky Replacement, the newest version, or one of the newer versions of Photoshop makes it super easy to do. And uh, I'll make sure that I put a, uh, a video together to show you, walk you through all the steps of doing that, because that'll save you a whole bunch of time. Uh, and it's super, super, super easy, and uh, just a, 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 a something that uh, now I look forward to doing Sky Replacement as before having to try and cut out you know, the sky and make it match and everything was just a nightmare. So uh, Photoshop makes it so much easier now to do sky replacement. I'll put that in another video pretty soon. All right, so we have um, all of the photos have been merged into HDR images. Um, they're, again, they're still, you know, they're not, really, they're not really edited. They're not like ready to just send off to a client. Uh, we gotta go in and, um, and edit them a tad bit. So let's just pick this one, go over to develop. And uh, you can see in this one, just looking at the, the waveform right here, the histogram, 
Um, this can be brought up, so we're going to zoom and bring this up. So we're not clipping. All right, that's better. And then now I'm going to take this drop tool, this uh, dropper tool, and let's see if we can get a good read on what is white. And so now that we've done that, we can bring this up just a tad bit. So now that we're getting a better white color um, for this um, for this image. Now I will say that uh, I think it can be overdone. Photos can be a little bit overdone with the white balance, and that the you know maybe it's true white you know in there. But when you actually get into the space because of the lighting that they choose, um, the bulbs that are in there, that's not really how it looks. And I know as photographers, we're supposed to do our best to make, make that space look its best, but I think we're all, we also need to make it look realistic so that when people get to the space, they're not surprised um, by how different it is as opposed to the photos. So uh, when I'm editing photos, I wanna make sure that I'm getting my whites as close to white as possible, but also as close to white based on the light that is um, in that space. So in this instance, I'm using the dropper and clicking on the sink, the top part of the sink, that's gonna give me a good idea of what white actually is. But then I need to bring up the temperature just a tad bit to compensate a little bit for the kind of light um, from the, uh, from the lighting fixture above. Usually in bathrooms like this, the light from there is not going to be 100% white. It's usually gonna be some sort of tungsten color. So we need to, so in my opinion, we need to compensate for that a little bit. So uh, this to me looks natural, it looks normal, um, and looks how it looked uh, when I was there taking the photo. So I'll add just a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna bring the highlights all the way down. I'm gonna bring the uh, shadows up a tad bit, add a little bit of contrast um, and a little bit of saturation. And to me, that looks like a, looks like a normal bathroom um, as it appeared when I shot it. And so I think my job's done for this photo. That's just an example. By all means, there are tons of different ways to edit photos, but I would just encourage you that when you are editing photos to make them look as realistic as possible as you know how they did on the day. Of course, you can brighten them up, you can bring up the shadows a little bit, but uh, I wouldn't go overboard with brightening it up, especially you know where uh, you know pushing it all the way to the limit, you know where it's you know, clipping or maybe just almost clipping, um, unless it, you know that's kind of what it looked like. But my opinion is that you know brighten it up make it look as best as possible, but also as realistic as it did on the day. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if this helps you at all. If you have any other questions about using Lightroom or taking HDR photos for real estate or just HDR photos in general, let me know in the comments below. Um, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell for more videos like this coming out very, very soon. I'm Nick with Table 19 Media. I'll see you in the next video.